A common question you'll find in the mind of any portrait photographer is how do I improve quickly? Or what do I need to do to take my portrait photography skills to the next level and fast? And all too often you'll hear other creators talking about the hundreds of generic things that don't really have much of an impact when it comes to moving the improvement needle. The result of which often leaving photographers with more questions than answers. What gear do I need to achieve great photos? Which poses should the model use and why? What's the fastest way to master how can I learn how to do which skin, camera which color how do you perfectly explain If this sounds like you, then trust me, you are not alone because I was in the exact same position. The truth is, none of this was having a major impact on my improvement as a creator. And as a result, I became frustrated, impatient, and at times, I'd feel pretty lost. That is, until one day when everything just sort of clicked. No pun intended. And this brought me back to the basics. And in the basics, I discovered the most important key when it comes to making massive improvements in this incredible art form, lighting. Now I know what you might be thinking, Justin, that's just too easy. Tell me something I don't know. But you see, that's exactly where things get interesting. Because I'm not simply referring to lighting as a means to illuminate your subject. I'm talking about seeing light in a whole new, well, light. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can see light differently and how you can use it like an artist. And in doing so, it will be a catalyst to help you make massive strides in your portrait photography game. Just as a painter uses paint to create beautiful artistic creations, I'm going to show you how you as a photographer can use light to create more artistic and creative works that will level up your photography and have viewers saying one thing and one thing only. Damn! Okay, so what are some of the ways that you can use light more creatively as an instrument to level up your portrait photography game? Number one, using light as paint, aka using light to create beautiful textures and visual interest in your images. Now there are a few ways to do this, so let's break it down. First and foremost, natural light leaks. This is when direct sunlight passes through gaps or holes in the wall or in between buildings in the street or when direct sunlight passes through gaps or holes in metallic fences, when light shines through window blinds to create awesome streaks of light on your model, as well as carefully allowing direct sunlight to shine through things like leaves, plants, or tree branches. This will effectively create stunning light textures or abstract shapes of light onto your model. You can also use a multitude of different household objects in order to create this same light leak effect. For example, you can use a pasta strainer or any other form of perforated kitchenware or any kind of object in your home with a pattern of holes such as a tennis racket or a badminton racket, etc, etc. Here are a couple of alternative inexpensive examples that you can use to create the exact same effect. Speaking of inexpensive, you can also go ahead and use some form of fabric or material that contains some kind of pattern of holes in it, such as mesh or tool or lace. In doing so, you can create some incredibly detailed light textures on your model. One photographer who creates beautiful natural light leaks is my friend John Snip, who uses sun hats to create beautifully intricate light leak textures in his close-up portrait photography. Light leaks can also be created using artificial light, such as a bedside lamp with a special perforated lampshade. This really takes painting with light to the next level. If you don't have something like this in your home, you are sure to find a ton of inexpensive options online, some of which I will link in the description down below. Speaking of projecting with light, another way to paint beautiful light textures onto your model is to reflect light off of a mirror or disco ball to paint a dazzling display of light patterns onto your subject. Or you could use a simple light prism, a sun catcher prism, a chandelier jewel, or even something as simple as the underside of a CD to create some amazing rainbow colored light texture projections. Okay, so that covers the light texture portion of painting with light. Let's now take a look at how you can add visual interest to your photos by painting with light specifically in the background. Now what I'm referring to is something that I'm actually using in my video right now. If you take a look at my background, you can see all sorts of examples of how I'm adding visual interest to my footage by painting with light using a variety of different lights, including some handheld lights, this lamp over here, the candles over there, and the LED lights behind my desk. Using light in this way can make your overall composition much more interesting and can really help to create an artistic and creative feel to your work. Bonus points if you use contrasting color in the background and foreground to boost your photo's depth 
and dimension. Okay, so let's move on to tip number two, using light to draw focus to your model, all the while separating them from the background to make them pop or stand out more. To do this, you simply need to find a location where the foreground is bright and relatively well lit, whereas the background is quite dark and in shadow. This will help to create a more eye-catching photo that draws your viewer's eyes into the frame. This will also bring the attention of your viewer to the main subject in frame, which is your model, by helping them stand out more. For example, this can be achieved indoors by placing your model in a dark room in front of a bright window, or outdoors by using a shaded alleyway in the street and then using the light from above to illuminate your model. Tip number three, using light to create depth on your model's face, thereby creating a much more 3D looking image overall. This can be achieved using three very easy and inexpensive methods. The first method is backlighting. This method is a highly effective way to separate your model from the background whilst boosting depth by creating a beautiful rim or halo light around the edge of your model. This is also known as subject separation and it works by making your subject stand out or seemingly pop from the background creating the illusion of a more 3D image. All you need to do is position your model with their back to the sun in front of a preferably darker background to emphasize the glowing and separating halo of light. The second method is window lighting, which is used to wrap light around your model's face. Window lighting is an excellent and essentially cost-free way to make your model look much more 3D and has been used by old master painters for centuries such as Vermeer and Rembrandt to create stunning dramatic portraits filled with tons of depth. Now the reason why window lighting works so well to create a more 3D looking image is because of the way that light wraps around your subject's face, thus creating a strong boost to the contrast. All you need to do to achieve this effect is to position your model at an angle or to the side of a window in a preferably darker room with the lights turned off, so as to emphasize the shadows cast on the opposing side of your model's face. The third method is negative fill. Negative fill is an awesomely versatile and accessible depth enhancement technique since it can be found pretty much anywhere. But the interesting thing about this method is that it doesn't rely on light. In fact, it uses the opposite, the absence of light to create a more 3D looking image. How it works is that it removes or blocks surrounding light from reflecting onto your subject so as to augment or darken the shadows on one side of your model effectively boosting the contrast on your subject, thus creating a more 3D image. The beauty about negative fill is that it can be found almost anywhere, from trees in a park, to furniture, flower bushes, alleyways, to walls, and even your model's own hair can act as an effective negative fill. Now speaking of absence of light, let's now move on to our fourth lighting tip, which you can use to create next level images and in doing so help you improve significantly as a portrait photographer. And that is low light or nighttime photography. As you just saw in the previous example, the absence of light can actually serve as a powerful tool to help you level up your portrait game. And this is because of how darkness and shadows, aka the absence of light, can help you to boost your photo's contrast and punchiness. An image with more contrast equals a more eye-catching and more engaging image. This is just how human beings are hardwired. Understand this and you can really start to have some fun with the types of photos that you create. For example, shooting at nighttime whilst also incorporating special lighting textures and visual interests in the background, such as LED lights or city light bokeh, can be an awesome way to create some high contrast and magical looking images. You can also have some fun with the way in which you illuminate your subject using things things like laptops or other handheld lights, such as mobile phones with their brightness turned all the way to the max. This will really help to isolate your model as the main subject in frame, drawing focus, and helping to make your model pop out. If you're really feeling creative, you can even use colorful street neon lights, or the lights in escalators, to paint light onto your model to create next level mesmerizing and artistic looks. So I hope you found this video helpful guys. If you did, be sure to check out the following video on screen for more tips and tricks on how to take your portrait photography to the next level. I'll see you inside.